Konnichiwa YouTube! Welcome back to r Cage Live with your host Only One Shinobi and uh, the continuation of the Rags to Riches money making series. So you'll notice I changed my costume. It is summertime and it's hot out here in Solus. After all, there's a desert, so hope you enjoy the new look. A nice tattoo with our new guild crest as well. Um, yeah, sporting that swimwear. So today, what I'd like to talk about um, is land management. I know it's been a while since uh, last Rags to Riches episode. Um, I hope you've been doing those donkey runs and making money as you should be. Uh, and if that's the case, then hopefully you've got enough cash to buy your first 16 farm. Um, now, I would suggest buying the farm before the farm cart, uh, just so that you have a place to put packs or grow things, mats for your trade runs, uh, or just make some money to help you get your hauler and uh, your wagon and your hauler. Uh, and when you have a 16, there are a few approaches you can take. Uh, first is to grow materials for your trade runs. Second would be for crafting. Um, third might be for uh, just selling directly to the auction house. So let's take a look at what we have around here. Um, you'll see this guy has a gazebo. Um, and he's got a bunch of, uh, what, do you, what do you call them, water buffalo. Uh, he's obviously growing for leather, um, which he'll use to craft, probably. So that's one approach. Uh, on this gazebo, there's milk and uh, lemons. So um, this is actually my gazebo. Um, and I do this uh, to get materials for larders, which I use for trade packs. So that's growing for trade packs. Um, and then over here you have larders. So if you have a cart or you have a wagon, uh, making larders and then taking them to a new destination uh, is a good approach. You can watch my episodes on larders if you follow the link. Um, and this is a good way to make money because these packs are a little bit more, uh, have a little bit higher turn-in than, than other packs. So there are a few approaches you can take. Um, if you're going to grow to sell, which is kind of what I suggest, if you only have one 16 by 16 farm, um, then it might be best for you to just grow items to sell directly on the auction house. Um, and that's going to be probably the best way for you to make some cash. So uh, if you're doing that, you need to... I'm going to start planting while I talk. If you're doing that, you're going to need to um, do some research on what items are going to be best for your playtime. Uh, what items are you know a high high value at the moment and that changes from time to time uh, you need to pay attention to your climate uh, we're out here in Solus this is arid climate so the only thing that really gets a bonus is saffron but depending on your climate you actually get a higher yield uh, for the type of crop that you grow um, I'm growing ginseng and I'll explain to that I'll explain that to you in just a moment here so um, another thing you need to consider is peace times and other trade runs for example Halcyona goes into peace um, and people move those packs quite frequently and so when that happens things like yams um, and other trade materials that Halcyona uses are going to go up in price. So if you have a lot of time to invest into uh, planting and farming, then those are things that you should consider. Now, I personally don't have time to worry about peace zones and uh, daily fluctuations in prices, so I tend to plant something that's going to be always uh, in demand, such as ginseng. Um, saffron is a good one, also quinoa, uh, some of the higher, more expensive seeds. Um, but it takes a lot of money to invest in it if you've got farms. So uh, if you do only have one farm, I also recommend planting single seeds. You'll notice I'm doing bundles, but that's because I have multiple farms. So if you're only doing uh, 116, it's probably better investment for you to plant them with single seeds and if you're curious about that I released a video quite some time ago uh, doing an experiment with bundles versus single seeds but it's always going to be higher yield so you're gonna get more harvest more crop per harvest if you plant single seeds rather than bundles uh, bundles just saves you a lot of time um, especially if you've got multiple farms so as you can see like people here plant single saffron this is probably the best thing to plant here in Solus but uh, your farms are probably in different locations, so consider that. 
Now, uh, when it comes to research, uh, there are a number of ways to do it. You can just eyeball it, I guess. Check the auction house every day before you plant and decide. Um, I actually create a spreadsheet um, and put all the values into the spreadsheet. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Okay, so here's the spreadsheet. I call it my agriculture report. And what I've done here is I've listed all of the... Uh, uh, all of the farming and gathering uh, seeds on the left hand side here um, and then I've calculated in the cost of labor as well as the cost of the seeds um, and how much labor it takes and then we've we've sort of calculated out here how much profit you'll get per seed or per farm um, so we'll just go over real quickly we've got seed cost the labor to harvest um, and then the yield, average yield of a single seed or average yield of a bundle. So my bundle values are not exactly accurate since I can't find information on the amount of labor it takes to harvest each bundle, um, but we're filling that in as we go uh, from experience. So if you take a look over here, if you take a look over here at the end, then we have the profits here. Uh, we just put input the current auction house value of the object uh, of the crop and then it'll come up with the profit so single seed profit here this is what is this aloe for example uh, single seed profit per 16 farm is about 30 gold whereas with bundles it's about 25 um, and this is after the cost of labor so this is assuming that you are buying a labor pot when you do this um, and you're still going to come out with 25 gold profit. Um, I've also put in the time here so that um, you know if I'm about to go out for three days I can take a look or if I'm going to be back in 12 hours I can plant something else. Now generally speaking the faster growing plants are going to be more profitable um, that's just how this game works so uh, if you're gonna sit there you wanna farm potatoes non-stop then you can go ahead and farm potatoes so what I usually do is I come over here to the profit section and then I organize that uh, by highest profit. So we go to alphabetical, there we go. Um, and as you can see then ginseng, quinoa, beans, uh, these are always at the top. Saffron is quite low today. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but um, saffron is usually up there with the rest of them. So that said, ginseng is almost always at the top. Uh, if we go to the lifetime list, uh, you can see, let's see, ginseng. I can't spell. G, ginseng is always sort of highest profit. So sometimes uh, 11 silver each, uh, recently 15 silver, uh, for example, here in June. So this is kind of what I do um, every time I'm about to plant. Uh, or I can do this once or twice a week and then check the profit list and decide uh, what I'm going to do. Now this may not be perfect, but uh, it's one way for me to make an assessment on what the best crop to plant is. Um, and I think something like this is going to be beneficial for you in the long run. Some way to evaluate the market because uh, obviously it takes time you know if you check your auction house now maybe you know maybe cactus is selling really high uh, but by the time your cactus grows and you harvest it, the price of cactus may have dropped. So keeping something like this on hand and keeping track of uh, previous prices is one way to see what the market is doing and make your judgments there. So um, I'll maybe post a link of this or post a file for you to download. You can fill in the values yourself uh, if you want to use something like this. Okay, so now that you see how the spreadsheet works, you can get an idea about how to monitor the market and choose a crop that's going to be best for you. Um, now, I live in an arid climate, so saffron uh, is usually at the top of the list, along with ginseng and quinoa, but saffron is going to be best in arid climate. Uh, if you're just planting 116, you might want to go with that. Um, I choose ginseng for a number of reasons. First is that uh, ginseng is a little less labor intensive. So if I'm planting such a large quantity like this, uh, ginseng is going to be a little bit more manageable with my labor. Uh, second is that saffron takes a little bit longer to sell. Now I want a quick turnaround, so I plant ginseng and this sells almost immediately. Uh, so the profits are in my pocket and I can plant again rather than wait. Uh, if you want to maximize profits, 
uh, you want to sell the crop that has the most profit so even if that's uh, saffron for example if it sells slowly in the meantime you sell something else like uh, mint or aloe uh, in arid climate which would give you a higher yield so that being said I hope this gives you sort of an idea of what to plant on your 16 farm uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is that if you don't want to grow to sell, a lot of people don't. Um, if you look around, you'll see farms like this here. Uh, they're always empty. The only thing on them are packs. And these are farms that traders use just for location. Uh, so they just store their packs here before they want to take them to the turn-in point. So if that's something you'd like to do, because trading does make lots of money, uh, you need to consider your location quite well quite carefully. So some locations are better than others. For example, Silent Forest here up near the Yenister border is an excellent location. Whenever Yenister goes into peace, uh, you can just move whatever packs you have staged and take them over. Um, other locations like uh, Mahadevi Coast here in Queens Grove uh, or in Villanelle along the coast, Seven Bridges or Torchfire Bay, uh, these locations are excellent for staging if you're going to do overseas trade routes. Um, and we'll get into that in a later episode. So, uh, we live out here in Solus because we like to move red spice packs, um, and this is a good location. You need to own land here to do that, so that's why the Guild Village exists here. Uh, all of that being said, I hope uh, this gives you a better idea of what to do with your land. Um, in a future episode, we're going to take a look at how to move packs on more advanced trade runs. Uh, so keep a lookout for that. Um, if you have any questions about farming or crops or which crops to grow, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, for now, that's going to be it. So thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next episode. Shinobi out.